The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Got a little bit of market movement <laughs> past, past day or so here. We're going to try to figure out where this thing's headed. Uh, but first of all, we're going to take a look at something. And I uh, just want to point out a couple of things. Okay. Uh, going back into our data here that you guys have access to, uh, we looked at some of these numbers the other week. And I just want to kind of revisit this a little bit here on our breath situation for guys who are not looking at the screen i'm just going to try to make this as verbally apparent as possible but as we look at these new boxes attempting to appear new profiles new supply areas in this case attempting to appear on a weekly you see that still hovering around the eight nine ten percent we were actually at 13 um last week actually towards the end of the week so what that means is is, is we're going to have new supply areas lock in more than likely on Monday morning pre-market. Now, what does that all mean? That means that a lot of these numbers that you see down here, for all intents and purposes, you know, will change. And as we look at this now, even in the current week with the 8 to 9% going on, that means that actually on Bloomberg, we actually have revolving profiles. What does that mean? That, mean? that means that we don't have new box attempting to appear features there or new supply or demand areas attempting to appear on that particular platform. Those profiles move around, which is actually really, you know, probably not the best way to display something uh, because they actually can disappear. This is just giving an indication that new profiles may lock in at some point. If they stay in force as a indication by Friday's close, I don't know if probably I've even confused myself right now. But let me try to pack up. So, basically, in a nutshell, here with still the eight to nine percent new box above attempting to appear, which means new supply attempting to appear. A lot of these numbers down below, you've got to really seriously take that in consideration. Just as we were looking at the cracks in the armor last week on the 60s, 240s, and daily starting to happen, we actually now, in essence, have had a lot of supply areas appear up top. And therefore, some of these numbers, by default, are going to change Monday morning, but... You can actually take that as an indicator in itself as it stands right now. When this starts getting more populated up top, these profiles are already sitting there on the launching pad ready to appear. So, again, you know, this number up top, when we're, when we're starting to see cracks in the armor, you want to look at these new box attempting to appear on any of these time frames. As you can see on the dailies, we've kind of cleared out. All right. Um, but remember, these weekly numbers and these weekly crossovers are more than likely, in essence, already happened. Uh, but we haven't just had those lock in yet. I've definitely succeeded in confusing myself now. So but just wanted to let you know that we've, we've had a bear situation line up. We've had that pullback. And what do we do now? So let's go into our charts. This is our dollar. We've got to pay attention to this for a little bit here because you remember if you were listening to the show and probably listening to Tom every day, at some point, this was going to have some kind of overhanging bad connotation to the U.S. stock market. And now as these currencies move and, you know, you talk to anybody at any major, major trading desk across the globe, they're going to tell you that 
current big currency moves will cause big market changes type temperaments and now you're seeing that happen and as those currency moves happen quickly the readjustment to forecasting and and uh i mean just turn on the tv reading the article now now that they're all jumping on the bandwagon that no oh, man a strong dollar may not be the best thing in the world for the US stock market well we've been talking about that for a while and tom's definitely been talking about that for a while so um now that we've gotten into the a whole new area as far as the dollar is concerned um now the head scratchers have you know started thinking about eh, well this actually may affect corporate profits and overseas business transactions and blah 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 so what do we do with the dollar let's talk about that first um you know again we have nothing to hang on to up here we've got no reasons to start shorting this that's that's for deck on shore uh looking at our 240s we've got no even short-term information appearing um this is something that you know we could easily go above 100 and we might go above 100 just to do it that's just the way trading goes so just you know, pay attention to that. 100 is a big psychological number for anything, and there's there's quite a few people on the planet, investors, traders, central banks that are looking at this particular product right now. Obviously, gold and crude oil and all commodities, especially traded at CME, are, are priced in dollars. So we're going to take a look at gold, and we've talked about staying away from this. The dollar has pretty much solidified that thought process. And let's go right into energy. Well, let's take a look at crude oil. Now, I've been – I mean, I'm, I'm actually just – ecstatic that this thing's hanging in there like it's hanging in there but again we talked about on crude oil let's get, let's get back above the 50 dollar a barrel area before we start looking at putting our toe in the world on the long side again um could look at this as an accumulation area because we're in this weekly profile here uh all bets are off below 46 if you're looking at accumulation type dmz there Switch to let's see here. Hold on. All right, we'll take a look at that in a second. We're going to switch to May here. All right, I still show some volume in April. Fifty-one thirty-eight on May. We're looking at fifty-one oh three, fifty-one ten on on April. We got basically the same profiles. I have switched. Okay. All right. So somebody's saying go from April to May. Uh, April still had quite a bit of volume in it. So we'll, we'll look at May heading out moving forward. Let's take a look at the XLF. We've been screaming, trying to stay on the short side for this. And as we look at, uh, we looked at that 2450 area on the XLF. This has worked out quite nicely. We obviously talked about, you know, having some market help. We actually had that happen without question, and now we're having some breakdowns on the, uh, you know, the banking stocks and the financial sector doesn't like unknowns, and I think some of these banking stocks, you know, you know we've got the currency situation going on, um, we've got some big shifts going on, we've got a problem overseas with, you know, the Greek situation, you know, these, these are, all these things line up to not be something that financials like in general so what do you do now now that we've kind of come off this 2450 area uh we're still sitting in the middle of a fair auction on the dailies uh, i think this is a just kind of a let it fall apart type trade we actually closed below 24 which was huge and now we're going to be looking at 24 resistance and it will be just flat out awesome if we rally back up into 24 we're trading 2387 pre-market so on the xlf that's what we're looking at Okay, let's go right into the S&Ps. All right. We talked about 2052 being a big number. Um, obviously, that was overcome, closed below, and now we're going back and retesting that area. So let's take a look at this. And we obviously are keeping the breadth situation in mind. Um, 
there's that go back and retest that 2052 area after we had kind of pierced below and then we're rattling around. I think 2052 is uh, now your resistance area in the short run. We've met some targets on this. What's that gift horse in the mouth situation? Uh, but, you know, what do you do now? So here's the short term levels. You got 52 is a big level. Um, 66, 67. After that, if 52 doesn't hold or that general area, you've got another resistance area on the short term with the 240 box up there. But re remember that between 52 and 72, you, you've kind of got a vacuum there. And 66, 67 is going to be the, the place in between there that you could probably pick a battle around. Um, but again, the 240 unfurlows or 240, 2045. So what do you do now? Um, I'm going to try to pick a battle around 52. And if that doesn't work and I get stopped out, I'm going to pick one around 2067. That's the way I'm looking at this. Remember, we hoped before that when we went down into that 70 area, 2070, that we'd rally back up into that 2084 area. We got very close to that 2083. And, and now we're kind of using the same logic and hoping that we can gravitate back up into that 52 area. And we've actually already done that this morning. If you guys weren't trading a couple hours ago, this is our 60 minute. Just, uh, let's see. Down a window. Here we go. Um, what was that? Less than two hours ago, we reached a high of 2052.25. So we've already satisfied that, but we could, you know, if we're still in that general range. We could rattle around. Stocks open. We could rally just a little bit here, a relief rally. Keep 2052 in mind. We've already satisfied that already this morning, though. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ, some NASDAQ numbers. We finally come down into these unfair highs on the weekly. Remember, 4,400 was, a, was a, an initial target. These unfair highs are 40, 43.42. So what's happened? We've closed below, and just like the S&Ps, we want a little bit of a move back up so we can get short again. 43.64 unfair lows on our NASDAQ daily as we close below these profiles. How many points away is that? We're about 18, 17, 18 points away from possibly rallying back up to a major inflection point for a shorting opportunity on the NASDAQ. We'll be right back, folks. with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75 percent off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John, take your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is this Monday morning or is this uh, Wednesday morning? Um, anyway, let's take a look at the XLE because I was tooting the horn about looking at this from a relative strength standpoint, relative to crude oil and relative to the market. But when we got just, you know, these are things that didn't work out that we've we just want to make sure we cover 7881 we talked about when we got back down below there from that you know power up move that we talked about from 7418 on the xle this was this being stingy kind of like you know let's we've had some technical damage here now and let's let's wait until we cross the border let's get all the troops on the border and just all move across 7881 get a close above there to get back in the water that hasn't happened and this is a really really good example of you know at least having some 
line in the sand that you're going to draw for yourself to where, you know, and a lot of people have a lot, you know, have problems like, well, why wouldn't I buy it here? Why would I, why would I wait till it goes higher to actually buy it? And that makes a lot of sense. Like, why, <laughs> if you loved it down here, why would you wait till it went up here to, to really love it or however that saying goes? But this is a good example of saving some points here and, and just being patient because now – as we've come down into 75.17, and we don't know where crude oil is going to go. I think it's holding up incredibly well. The dollar is not helping that situation at all. But we may have a new profile appear down here. And that will give us some new inflection points to pay attention to, to possibly pick this up cheaper. Now, one of the things was to buy it higher. But the other side of the coin is possibly buying it cheaper. And that's just a really good way to look at this, in my opinion. And we're looking at this this way because we still have, you know, we're still in the balanced area down here. We're not making new lows, um, you know, and that's just the way I'm looking at the XLE still. So we're kind of sitting tight here based on some of the things that we just talked about. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the NASDAQ really quick because I had a question about that. And as we pull the NASDAQ back up, you know, we definitely migrated. I covered this a little bit while ago, but we definitely migrated below the 43.42 area. In fact, this week we have gotten as low as uh, 43.28. Okay. So we pierced it. We're sitting right now pre market at 43.42. So. Remember, the top of the box here is 43.42. So what do you do now? So in my opinion, right now, you've, you you know, those weeklies, again, you've got to give them a little bit of noise around those things. But the really, I think right now it's kind of a, could be a little bit of a wait and see. I think the S&Ps may migrate back up a little bit farther here this morning. That would give the NASDAQ possibly a chance to get into this 43.64. So I still think you got about, you know, 20 points that the NASDAQ could do just kind of a dead, not a dead cap bounce. I get, you know, we're coming off all time highs, by the way. So, you know, just a little bit of a retracement up. I, I like the 4364, 65 area a little bit better. A lot of our automated strategies are based around daily inflection points. I really like how they, how this price action acts around daily inflection points. So that's kind of my take on the NASDAQ. We had a question about that. Okay. When we come back from break, we're going to take a little bit of a respite from general index future relationships. Talk a little bit about a couple of solar stocks that are in the news right now. We'll be right back. Active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments? Then now is a great time to get a two week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and SP, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. You know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We've had some great questions today already. I'm going to look at silver really quick. I had a question about that. And let me pull it up. Yeah, I mean, this is something we, you know, we talked about picking a battle. I was liking the way this was acting. 1587 didn't work out. Dims the brakes. Trading. Got to take the medicine. Hasn't really sold off that much, actually, below there. But, uh, you know, if you've got your noise level a little tight there, you, you probably are not in this trade if you followed that logic. You know, we, we were hoping for possibly a target up in the 1623 if we cross that 1587 border again, that hasn't happened. I don't see a lot of reasons to buy this right now, this minute. So, uh, again, the dollar is affecting everything. Um, you know, the cool thing is, you know, really would be nice to see is going back to the dollar to be able to see, <laughs> you know, some kind of indication that we're slowing down here. Um, and that would, on my chart or within the scanner, Remember, you've got access to the dollar in the scanner. The dollar's right there. As you can see, we're just green across the board. Is to see a, a little yellow cell pop up on the daily or the weekly, or even the 240 for that matter. This just doesn't seem to happen that often. What does that mean? That means that new supply is coming online for the dollar. And until you see something like that happening, I mean, obviously, these other – instruments like the silvers and the golds of the world are going to still keep getting affected by the dollar alone if nothing else so uh but I, you know i like the way actually i like, kind of like the way that the thing's hanging in there um but you know i mean there may be a better better battle point to pick uh when it comes to silver from uh just flat out backing up the truck and getting along this thing 
So, yeah, that's where I'm sitting on. Now I want to bring up something, in my opinion, that's criminal. I mean, I actually think Silver's acting quite well. That's that's the sum of it. But, you know, you, uh, I'm kind of a stingy. I mean, if I'm long one share of stock overnight, I'm panicking. That's I just can't stand not even being in a 24-hour market. So that's that's my temperament. And it's probably, probably not good for everybody, but uh, that's the way I look at it. I'm looking at something that I'm just going to say is flat out. These people should be arrested for saying this. I'm looking at, again, a very noteworthy news service here. And I'm quoting. I'm quoting this. It says, however, after stocks broke under 2100, it was clear that they wanted to keep on the downward track for a little while. You know, they're telling us today that it was clear, you know, a couple of days ago. I mean, the cool thing is, it, is that guys on TFNN, you know, they put it out there and they take some, you know, they they try to comment real time and don't do this Monday morning quarterback crap that I'm reading. These 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 kind of things make me sick, literally. Um, so, you know, just uh, making a comparison to the guys on the TFNN network are usually right in the thick of it and uh, calling the shots as they see them, not waiting till after the fact, like a a Kramer or a uh, some of these yahoos. It was clear that you should have been shorting stocks below 2100 when literally the previous day, these guys were all about going long and only long. I mean, it's just it's comical. It's amateur. It's Bush. I'm in a good mood this morning. Um, here we go. So let's take a look at some solar stocks. First solar, um, had some questions about this, and I have to be a little bit of a Monday morning quarterback on this one, and I apologize for that. <laughs> 5208 was that breakout area on the long-term weekly. That gave you some pretty deep conviction, but we had a little bit, you know, had the gap up, had the news stories and all that. Weren't able to really get into the market then. But as we gap above these things, you know, they were asking, all right, what do I do with it now? Um I'm saying what you should have done with it back then. No, I'm not saying that. Let's let's take a look at you know what what's the score is now. Since we're above profiles on the weekly, what a lot of the times I look on the scanner, I look for, and we're, we're actually going to look at this a little bit later in the show today. We're going to look at the scanner and say you know what's trading above profiles. So what's actually pulling back into some major buy areas, stocks that are that are showing strength, but actually you know, showing a little bit of a pullback here so we can actually possibly pick it up on sale, um, staying on the right side of the market in the right stocks, the relatively strong stocks, or, you know, in the case of the market going up, we were looking for relatively weak stocks, but let's take a look at FSLR and FSLR did this little orange bar thing, as you can see back on Friday. Now, we don't have a daily bar appearing here, so this is Friday's close, uh, and we had the orange bar, which indicates and would have indicated in the scanner new supply attempting to appear. So as we had the new supply appear, we had the inflection point. Now, basically, that was a, a, a kind of a warning shot that you might want to start scaling out of some of this, if not all of it. So what do you do now? So the stock is strong. We've got a new profile appearing. That bottom of the box, so to speak, is 56.73. So that's what you would really hope that we could come down into to try to start possibly buying this thing again. That's FSLR, and that's a little bit of a take on that. Let's take a look at CSIQ. Okay, here's the daily. Again, this is a solar stock. When I was at NC State, I was very into it. they got a whole solar, if you guys have ever been there, they've got a whole solar just massive complex to uh, for solar engineering, actually. And I was back in the long time ago. That was something I was seriously looking at. 2965 up into 2993. So that, you know, 29 and a half to, to 30 area is the accumulation area this is what happened yesterday we had that 
Orange Bar, new supply area. So right now we're kind of a little bit in no man's land. I'd like to see this come down a little bit farther for a little bit better buy point. The market in general being the stock market, I don't think this move down is over by any means. So, you know, as we rattle around here on the market, it could drag down quite a few instruments. This being one of them, even though it's to some degree disconnected with uh, – you know, the relative strength trading system, but uh, I, I would be waiting for that 29 and a half to 30 area on this and uh, placing stops oriented below that area. This is the weekly situation on CSIQ. Obviously, love how it's acting in this type of market, though. You got to take a look at the bane of my existence November beans here. We have come back up into 975. That was the target rich short area, in my opinion. As we had used it before, I still like it as resistance. Somebody was asking about this in an email. 975, 976, still resistance with stops above on beans. You know, all commodities are somewhat dollar related. Um, this is obviously not holding, not, it's holding up relatively well. You got to keep that in mind. When it comes to November beans, we're going to take a look at healthcare because this is something that has been, you know, the kind of the Teflon coated stock here or the Teflon coated instrument here as far as the pullbacks concerned. 7105 closed yesterday. That's an indication that we knew, might, knew, might have some new. Uh, profile areas appearing here on the long term but here's the daily situation I think you've got a really good strong buy point on a pullback on healthcare 7043 on this particular ETF Hold on two seconds So that's the situation on the on the XLV, the healthcare sector. Let's take a look at one more solar stock. My charts will pop up here. It's eleven dollar stock, relatively cheap. Obviously, had some news. These things are on the move. You know, what do you do with it now? You've you've experienced all the news stories and. Um, you know, how do you trade this animal? So right now, here's the 240s. This is all we have to glean information off of. You know, I like to see things. This is our 240 minute profiles, 1180 top of the box. And as you can see, we we have this outputted back on <clears throat> Friday. Actually, we got this, and now we're into. Let's see, this is is this a real trade this morning? 1150. Yeah, so when we had this box output it, we knew this back on Friday. We actually hit the top of the box here. When I, you know, see things happen like this, I, you know, I, this is more of a compression into these, this top of this profile. This to me means like it ha actually has a chance to move higher just based on that alone. Um, and also remember that we have really nothing. Excuse me, let's go to our daily. We have really nothing telling us that, uh, you know, we have any new supply areas attempting to appear, to appear on our daily. So, you know, what does that all mean? That means that this is more than likely going to go higher, but make sure your stops are in. And there's a pretty generous stop area right now. You can obviously put a trailing stop based on your appetite for risk. But uh, all bets are off completely below 967 on this. But, uh, you know, stock looks good. Somebody was asking me about that. Let's see how some things have been weathering this storm here. Tesla finally broke that 193.70. We haven't had a close below there. There's nothing on the daily. We talked about you know stops would have to be below 193.70. It's not acting terribly bad, but uh, right now we'd like to see it cross that board again to get back in the water on the long side on Tesla. But my opinion is that the broad market may drag some things down, especially in the short run here. We got to take a look at treasuries really quick. We haven't mentioned those yet today. Tom said some pretty interesting comments yesterday that I fully agree with, which is, um, you know, the relationship. You know, any any time you've got 
well, the, the worm has turned on the treasuries. Um, you know, we've had some ample reasons to rally, especially the last day or two. Hasn't really happened in a big way like before. I mean, we were, when we sold off before on the markets, you know, we had the, the spikes that were almost historic in the treasuries. Now we're just eh, almost a, uh, a token spike, if you will. So right now the treasuries have gotten back down below this 126.28 area. Uh, which we talked about needing to happen to get back in the water alongside. This is kind of starting to show its hand like it used to show its hand for quite a few ye few years there. Market goes down, bonds and notes go up, market goes sideways, bonds and notes go sideways, market. You know, I mean, it's, there, was a, there was a bid in the marketplace, put it that way. Right now, we're looking at a little bit different situation, um, and I think some of the relationships out there are kind of forcing this thing to show its hand. Um, And the market actually may have a situation where markets go down and bonds and notes go down at the same time. And that's going to be that double-edged sword for portfolio managers that they haven't ever experienced, to be honest with you. So that's going to be some something new that they're going to have to deal with. And some of these guys are sales guys more than traders. And they uh, they know how to raise money, obviously. But they they might not know how to treat a situation that doesn't have all these classical historical relationships put before them in a market that doesn't go straight up. So um, it's going to weed out some folks more than likely. All right, we're going to take a look at a couple other stocks. i got to take a look at IBM. I've been real bearish on this, and uh, I think this stock deserves to be cut in half. They don't have a lot of good things going on, fundamentally speaking. And then the technicals, I love it. We got to take a look at Apple after the action yesterday. We knew we were at pre-market. Um, we talked about this getting below profiles. The only way to be long this was to get back above 127.24 or just wait for some new information down below. Um, you know, we used uh, yesterday's unfair unfair lows at 127.24. You know, kind of open open down and rallied back up and caught that area back there. Um, let's see, 127.24, and the high yesterday was 127.22, so we missed it by two cents. Um, again, this has not, <laughs> obviously not been the weakest stock in a in a weak market, but there's two theories here, or excuse me, it, it's been a strong stock in a strong market, obviously, and it's carried the index quite a bit. But there's two theories here. One of them is, you know, relative strength trading trying to find weak stocks in a strong market to short. We talk about that all the time, and the scanner really will kind of paint the picture for you on a, on a lot of those notions. But sometimes stocks that are really, really stretched out uh, and overextended, I, I guess, so to speak, have a good chance of also selling off. Um, but that's a little bit riskier game to play. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit when we come back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I see they're celebrating Kramer's success story here. I don't know where to begin there. Um, happy for him, I guess. All right, so uh, let's take a look at Urban Outfitters. Here we go. Big move yesterday. Um, you know, somebody's asking me, you know, what do you do with this now? Uh, here's the 60 minute, uh, you know, trading 44 or 6. You know, what do you do with it now? Actually, in the face of the market, uh, you know, I think this is kind of a sit tight. I don't think the, you know, very, very not market dependent, and to be honest with you, there's probably some shorts in this <laughs> that are that are kind of praying right now, um, as I would be. This is pretty uh, pretty outstanding move up here. So, you know, what do you do with now? Do you if you long this, do you get rid of it? I don't think so. I think you just sit tight and wait for some new profiles to appear. Uh, you know, there's obviously going to be some some rattling around up here. The, the good thing that you would really want to see here is for this to do exactly what it's doing is get into a tight range, compress, 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 and that's not indicative of normal turnaround action. So those are kind of continuation patterns. So, you know, it's not been petty, petty good to me, but maybe petty, petty good to somebody else. That's my take on it. Okay, we were talking about Apple and actually, you know, stocks that were kind of overextended. And, you know, we talked about relative strength trading on the short side uh, in, a, in, a weak, in a strong market and then vice versa. But, you know, sometimes we've got these stocks that are just 
carrying the load like Apple. Um, a lot of news out on it, going into the Dow, etc. And sometimes you do have some decent snapbacks in those overextended stocks. But my theory on that is, is you know, I you know, I'm a big fan of boring trading at this stage of my life, and and that's that's playing a a little bit scarier game. There's a lot of upside to that. Tom actually coined it very well the other day. Some when these gold stocks snap, um, you know, even though they've been down, just like some of these XLE stocks, they snap 15, 20 percent at the hint of crude oil not going down anymore. You know, and those were the stocks that were getting their head handed to them, you know, continuously. But did they snap back and give you a big, big move? Yes. Uh, has it been scary to try to time that? Did you need to look around a little bit before you stepped into that type of trade? Yes. Um, but there is some money to be made on high flyers, short them, or low flyers, I guess. Is that the word, low flyers? <laughs> um, snapping back also as exemplified by the XLE stocks. So, again, just wanted to point that out. Here's a, here's a stock that I follow. Just continually amazed amazon all right so we had that new profile up here we skirted it all the way down 380 we talked about um and now we're getting back down into that let's just see here excuse me weekly profile up here at the same time crossing the daily so where's the buy point on amazon i think your targets down below now are 358 since we have this new profile up here and we talked about this uh, I'm sorry I went to the daily first. I was confusing myself again. But uh, that's, you know, we had new supply attempting to appear. The new profile appears this week. And then, you know, your, your targets down below are 358 now. Okay. Somebody was asking about that. Let's take a look at ExxonMobil really quick. You got about 10 seconds. This is one we talked about staying away from and didn't like the action, didn't like it sitting down here on the lows as, as some of the other stocks in the group were. We're showing a little bit better situation. Still the case. Still think this is a short. Thanks, guys. We'll be traveling the next two days. I'll try to pick it back up again Monday at the latest, probably Tuesday. You guys will be great. Steve Rhodes is next. Stay tuned. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.